Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a much longer presentation. I'm going to try to compress into 10 minutes. Hopefully, I achieve that. So, Ripio is the leading blockchain company in Latin America. We have more than 200,000 users, uh, most of them in Argentina and Brazil. We're currently launching in Mexico and Colombia. Uh, we are a Bitcoin wallet, an exchange, do payment services, and we also have credit services. Um, we are fortunate to have very good investors like DCG, uh, Draper, Booth VC, Pantera Capital, among many other uh, good investors. We're one of the oldest companies in the space. We're here since 2013. And most of our team has a lot of experience in payment, security, and credit. And since we launch, we always focus in Latin America because we think it's one of the areas that have, or regions that have the most uh, need for these kind of solutions. Most of the countries in Latin America have high inflation, very weak currencies. There is a poor access to banking, formal or semi-formal. And we think this technology can lower the cost to access to financial services and also be a way to find a a uh, store of value better than, than your own currency. Like something I like to say to, to just give a, a sense of how important this is, is that I'm over 30, uh, I'm from Argentina, and I saw three times the currency of my country collapse to zero. Uh, so I think like Bitcoin has a chance to go to zero, but it's lower than the Argentinian peso go to zero again. <laughs> so that, <laughs> that says a lot, but. So uh, our mission has always been to democratize access to financial services using uh, blockchain technology in emerging markets. And our last project is RCN. Uh, we always saw that this, te this base technology is like an infrastructure, and on top of it, we'll be start building new financial services uh, using this technology, lowering the cost and bringing more access. So RCN, RCN is a peer-to-peer -peer credit network based on cosine smart contracts. That's a long thing, but we'll get into, into what the, all that means. So why, why RCN? Um, if you look at traditional banking for access to credit, uh, it has very low penetration, especially in emerging markets, where less than half a percent of the population has access to it. Uh, it has a lot of bureaucracy, and, which means that it has a high cost to, to get access into credit. And that, all, uh, that means that a lot of people that doesn't get access, and the ones that do get access is very expensive. Uh, it's, it's expensive to be poor. Uh, it's, um, if you're richer, you get access to better credit. And in the internet, there has been solutions trying to achieve peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, but they are, uh, have a few issues. One is that um, they are also restrict rationally, like they are just in one country. If you look at Lending Club, for example, which is a sponsor, they only work in one country. Uh, and they are not truly global. And they also have very asymmetrical risk. And the lender has a lot of more risk than lending, that putting their capital in through other means. Uh, so what we think can be built, and this is what we have been pushing, is use the blockchain and the smart contracts to build a new network that is completely global. Uh, and it also just makes sense to think like, if this is, uh, credit is one of the oldest um, contracts. Like it, a credit contract is very basic. It just says, I, mean, I give you capital, you give it, give it, it back, back with an interest in the future. It's a very simple construct. And it makes sense that it will become a smart contract in the future. So how does a smart contract look for credit? So on RCN, uh, when a user asks for credit through their wallet, what they do is they fill out a form similar to what they will do, like I want this amount of money, and we'll, get, uh, we'll pay it back in a month or in different conditions. And what the wallet does is creates a smart contract that represents that request for a loan and is published into, a, into the blockchain. We're currently using the Ethereum blockchain. But just that, that alone is, not enough to make it secure for the lender to be able to provide the capital. So we introduce a, a, a few agents that makes this secure. 
One of the agents is a scoring agent that makes an attestation of the, uh, how good is the, um, is the borrower. We also have identity providers, which are agents that can uh, do claims about who is the, the user in case he defaults. We have a partnership with Bloom, and we are doing partnership with other identity providers that uh, connect to the network. And we have a, a key um, agent that we call the cosigner. So the cosigner is kind of like an insurance that works like as, as an insurance and a collection agency. So when the user um, makes this request, there is a cosigner that signs together, and in case of it, the user defaults, then the cosigner will pay the lender, and they, and they will own the loan and go after and collect from the user. So this agent is the one that makes this feasible for making it completely global. So imagine you are a lender from South Korea, and you have a borrower in Brazil, and the Brazilian uh, defaults. If you're in South Korea or you're in the US or any other country, how do you go after and try to collect from the user? You, you don't have the knowledge, and, and it will be too much expensive just to do it. So by having a cosigner, which is a local entity, they will pay the loan to the, uh, to the lender, and then as they are a local agency, they can go and collect from, from the user. And we actually got this idea for something that actually currently works, but on paper. So um, a small, a small and medium businesses have a way to finance themselves in emerging markets by, by making a check, like a physical check, and they put the, the date in the future. But if they try to sell it, no one will buy it because they don't know who, who that small business is. But there is these agencies that are called SGRs, Sociedad de Garantia Reciproca, and they are common in Argentina, Brazil, even in Spain. And what they do is they stamp the, the back of the check with a rubber stamp, like actual stamp, and sign it. And, and this makes the check a lot more valuable. And there will be, uh, and then the, the, this small company will be able to access better credit. So we got that idea, and we converted into how that will look into the into the blockchain and through a smart contract. So some of we launched and we did our, our token sale. We have been working a lot on this product and, and this project. We have loans in the network that are live and the people and, and paying, them, paying them, them back. We learned a lot from our first version and we are now launching a second one that is a lot more efficient, that it takes much less transactions on the network to, uh, to publish it, which also makes it a lot more cheaper. It's also now that there is a standard for non-fungible tokens. It's now comp compatible with RC721, uh, so that they are more easily transferable between wallets that support this standard. And we have done a lot of partnerships with, uh, with decentralized projects like Decentraland or uh, a few more. And we're also integrating with a lot more wallets. Um, right, right now, the only one wallet that is working is our own, which is Ripio. But there are uh, three more wallets that are integrating them. Uh, two are global and two are from Asia. So um, we are always aiming for the moon, and I managed to make it less than 10 minutes. I can't believe that. <laughs> so, well, thank you. My email is Sebastian at Ripio. Uh, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email. Thank you.